There's a few fan bases that feel pretty good today, in theory, because it's like spring training. This is football's version of spring training. We got hope. We got a chance. The sun is out. If you're a Jets fan, you're like, yes. Giants fan, yes. Eagles fan, yes. We don't want to start positive, do we, with Dan Orlovsky of the Mothership, kind enough to join us. Uh, it looks like he's outside a hotel here. Uh, you can see him on NFL Live later today, 3 to 5 Eastern on uh, the Mothership. Dan, do you want to start positive or negative? I'll start positive. I have to. It's Friday morning. I'm outside Caesar's Palace uh, waiting for my ride. Not the real one, Dan. Um, I will say <laughs> Jets had a franchise-changing draft. Okay. Um, just just a phenomenal draft for them. Um, when, when you talk about the talent that, that they got is just – Lights out um, with Jermaine Johnson, um, Garrett Wilson. I, I had said yesterday, Dan, I would have taken Garrett Wilson with the number one pick if I was the Jaguars. I think he's going to be that good of a wide receiver in the NFL. Wow. I, think I think he's Devontae Adams, yeah. And that's where the league is going. Obviously, we saw all the trades. Uh, Philadelphia had an incredible evening um, and is, is the division favorite uh, in the NFC East. Um, I thought the Giants got a lot better in the line of scrims. The Detroit Lions are, are the second best team in that division right now. Um, so some really, really good starts for teams. Uh, we waited for Pittsburgh to take Kenny Pickett. Were you uh, how surprised at that? I wasn't shocked that it's a quarterback. I just thought at 20, if Malik Willis was there, they were going to take Malik Willis. Um, listen, awesome, phenomenal story when it, when it comes to Kenny Pickett and, and him being from there and then playing college football in there. And uh, I have a couple of things. Number one, they see Kenny Pickett every day, Pittsburgh, that organization. They practice basically on the same fields. So they've obviously got to feel a level of comfort with uh, the this, this selection of him. Um, he's a very similar player to Mitchell Trubisky, though. And that's where I have a little bit of hesitation with it is, um, physically, they're kind of the same guy, good athlete, really dependent on their ability to run around and create. Um, poor mechanically, average accuracy. So I feel that that's why I felt a little bit stronger about if they get a guy, Malik Willis, because of the high end talent or Desmond Ritter because of his, you know, his, his uh, pocket operation. Um, but they are, like I said, they, they see Kenny Pickett every day, so they must, must really like him. Yeah, and we've corresponded. I don't think any of these quarterbacks are first-round talents. Um, I, right. I think they're all projects. I just brought up, if I'm a team and I, and I need a quarterback now, I take Baker Mayfield. I somehow make a deal for Baker Mayfield. It's a one-year deal, Dan, and if the Browns will pick up the tab or half of it, I got a starting quarterback for $18 million who now needs to prove himself – I, you know, a guy who plays with a chip on his shoulder, man, I'd be, I'd be really interested in Baker Mayfield right now than one of these guys who are going to be a project who are going to be drafted, you know, either tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, no brainer, Dan. I, I said that he'll be the draft steal of the weekend. And if you're the team, here's the reality, because it's facts over feelings. The, the fact is the last time Baker Mayfield uh, played healthy in the NFL, 21 to 30, 320 yards against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, yes, he threw an interception on the final game-winning drive potential, but he played really good football that day. Yeah. Two years ago in 2020, he was a top-10 player. So is your vantage point 2020 or 2021 um, with how you view Baker Mayfield? But if I'm one of these teams and I'm sitting here and, and I get into the fourth round, Cleveland's got to eat $14, $15 million of his deal because if they cut him, they got to pay him 19 so they, they got to eat a chunk of it, and that's their own doing. But if you're in the fourth round and you wanted to draft a quarterback and you can get Baker Mayfield, then the, here's the truth. Baker Mayfield has had better seasons in the NFL than Daniel Jones, than Marcus Mariota, than Tua tunga I mean, he's had just as good of a season as Ryan Tannehill, um, the Indianapolis Colts. Matt Ryan's had one better season than him. Now he's had a lot more consistency, but um, I just think, He'll be a steal of the draft for some GM. We're talking to uh, Dan Orlovsky, joining us from outside Caesars Palace there. Uh, help me understand Lamar Jackson. He sends out the tweet, WTF, when Hollywood Brown yeah. gets traded. Now he's followed up by saying, hey, that tweet was not about us drafting a center. 
stop that BS. So what what is the WTF? Uh, I, I think there's some some hurt there. You know, Hollywood and him are boys. I mean, they, they got, kind of grew up in the same area, and, and it's bigger than football for Lamar when it comes to Hollywood. And the fact that Hollywood went to the organization, asked for the trade, and really – at least to our reports today, did not communicate in any way to Lamar that I, I think he's hurt over that. You know, he lost a good receiver, but I think he lost one of his best friends. And I think that's where that frustration lies. The Ravens had an incredible draft. It's just this is going to be overshadowing it. And then the second thing, too, Dan, is, you know, they're in contract negotiations with him. So, um, you know, the fact that his best friend or one of his best friends didn't tell him this and then the organization didn't in any way – hint to it. Um, we could have probably seen the writing on the wall or the tea leaves when it comes to all the receivers that they have drafted over the past couple of years. Uh, but I think Lamar is a little bit more hurt than anything. Help me understand what the Titans, you know, I know that they didn't want to pay AJ Brown, but you know, this is a kid who's 24 years of age. Yeah. Uh, I think this is all butterfly effects from Tyree Hill. You know, I said when Tyree Hill got traded from the chiefs, it was going to be NFL changing because Teams are going to start to sit there and go, and all, all these, Dan, in the um, last four drafts, so not including last night, there have been 40 receivers drafted in the first or second round. There's six of them that are no greater busts. So the, the receivers that are coming into the NFL are now better players and more ready to go in impactful guys early than guys of the past. So I think that's number one. Obviously, the KC trade of Tyree Kittle the ability to acquire more picks for your roster, number two. Um, they, they, they believe that Traylon Burks is going to be a you know, plug-and-play type of performer impactful-wise. So I think that's the biggest part of, of why. And then Ryan Tannehill's got the highest cap, salary cap out of any quarterback in the NFL this year. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit of it as well. Well, I know you're a busy, man. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, uh, as always, and uh, you'll uh, have more of Dan on uh, NFL Live later on today at uh, 3 to 5 Eastern. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. You're the best, bud. Uh, Dan Orlovsky, uh, ESPN football analyst there, joining us on his way to, I think, first take.